Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dilara Saeed. I'm with the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition. Thank you to the ISNA Convention for making sure that we talk about the urgency and the importance of the 2020 U.S. Census during this convention. The U.S. Census happens once every 10 years. It counts every single one of us. It is safe, easy, and important. Over $700 billion in federal funding will be allocated to states based on our populations and our census data. So the 10 minutes it takes to do the census will impact the 10 years of our life ahead as Americans. So when I talk about Americans and I zoom into American Muslims, you and I know we are a diverse, complex, vibrant, and challenged community. We need to make sure every single one of us has access to the resources and supports we need to take care of ourselves, our families, and our communities. American Muslims come in every color, black, brown, tan, and white. We are high net worth, middle class, and low income. We are citizens, immigrants, residents, and undocumented. Every single one of us counts. And please remember, men, women, and babies count. Often people forget to count their children. Don't let that happen. Today, we're going to try to provide an engaging virtual session on census. We'll begin with a music video sung by artist Hamza Abbasi, and the production of it is the coalition team. Can't guarantee that you won't be humming the tune all week long, but I hope what we can guarantee together is every single one of us will then go on 2020census.gov, 2020census.gov, and complete the census. And if we've already done it, excellent. We are now the champions that have to make sure 10 other families and households complete it as well. We will then go on to a panel discussion led by Rima Gamran of experts that will talk about digging deep into the census. Before that, we'll also have US Census Representative Marilyn Saunders give us some current statistics on where we are with census reporting. And again, talk about the urgency of the next month. We'll wrap up this hour with great census stories from everyday people, you and I, living in this nation across the communities. I know the census is really important to my family. We immigrated from India 50 years ago. I know some of my legacy pieces are right here. And I know the legacy I will now share as Americans is now making sure the census is done for our family and for the families across this nation. So join me in that. Enjoy the program and the session. Please reach out to us at IllinoisMuslims.gov or USCensus.gov to make sure your questions are answered. And please make sure you complete the census and engage everyone else you know to do this as well.
As the Chicago Regional Census Director, I appreciate the opportunity to join you today for the 57th Annual ISNA Convention. Thank you, Dr. Saeed and Cameron for extending this invitation on behalf of the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition for me to provide today a snapshot of where we are in the 2020 census, it's important to all of us that we get a complete and accurate count. I take inspiration from the theme of this year's conference, a struggle for social and racial justice, a moral imperative. I'm even more compelled to express to you today the importance of responding to the 2020 census. It is now more important than ever. We are less than 30 days from our deadline for people to self-respond. They can respond online, by phone, or by mail. While we've seen many challenges that have impacted our timeline and we've adjusted that, your support and your commitment in helping us to ensure that we get a complete and accurate count for all communities is so important. We have been working in a virtual environment since March, reminding everyone that participating in the census is safe, is easy, and is important. Whether we're hosting virtual meetings or knocking on doors, we are committed to collect the data in a safe environment, both for our individuals that are working on the ground, as well as for the public. Yes, we're in the midst of the count right now, and it's important. $675 billion are distributed annually. 10 minutes, 10 minutes it takes for you to complete the census. And you, by completing the census, inform so many decisions for the next 10 years. We need your help. We need to encourage everyone on the importance of raising their hand and being counted. Going to 2020census.gov, respond now. The census is important to your community. We've been working tirelessly to make certain that we reach every community and make certain that everyone knows that the census is being conducted now. Pick up your phone, pick up the telephone, Go online, use your voice to resource to your community the importance of the census. We need everyone's support. The census is safe. We will never share your information and it is protected by law. The information that we collect is for the purpose of reapportionment for redistricting and importantly, to bring services to every community across this nation. We welcome this opportunity to encourage you to participate in the 2020 census. Respond now. Your voice is important and we need everyone to be counted in the 2020 census. Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to our panel on Census 2020. We are excited to be presenting at ISNA and we have a great group of panelists here with us to tell us about why the census is important, what are the challenges we face, and how we can make sure that we are all counted as a community. So let me take a moment to introduce our panelists. First, we have Ryan Suto from the Amer uh, Arab American Institute. We have Nabila Mansour from Engage, specifically Engage, Texas, and Brother Randall Mohammed, Randall Mohammed from American Islamic College, AIC. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having right. us. Awesome. We are going to get sta started with Ryan. Ryan. I'm going to start with just saying 2020 is the year to make sure marginalized communities, hard to count communities actually, how do we make sure that that happens and how is the Arab American Institute doing this work? 
Thank you, and thank you for having uh, me and, and the Arab American Institute. Um, again, I'm Ryan Sudo, Policy Counsel for the Arab American Institute. Uh, AI has been working um, on increasing responsive rates to the census uh, for decades, including our advocacy for adding a Middle Eastern North African category onto the census. Um, I'll get, maybe get into that a little bit later. Um, but we kind of look at it as diff there are challenges and opportunities. Um, some of the challenges include the attempt to add the citizenship question um, to the census, which we, I think all of us probably know that was ultimately failed, but there was insufficient inoculation messaging around it. So there are still a lot of, uh, a lot of people who are, you know, oh, I heard that might be on, is it on? And that in itself um, can help depress um, response rates. Um, we've seen immigration raids. We've seen, we've heard xenophobic rhetoric um, from this administration, all of that. And plus, you know, generations and generations of, of, of reasons for distrust of um, the federal government really um, is a challenge for a lot of uh, the communities that are watching, watching this. Um, and so that's one of the challenges. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've been advocating for adding a, a Middle East North Africa category because right now, um, Arab Americans and a lot of other uh, communities uh, that don't identify as white um, are technically supposed to check white. Uh, but, you know, as we know, when we have discussions about civil liberties, civil rights, um, these communities are not treated as white and <laughs> don't see themselves as such either. And so um, there have been numerous studies and numerous efforts showing that response rates increase when people see themselves reflected on the form. Um, that was not added. Um, and so unfortunately that has been shown to decrease people, people's willingness to participate. So that's another challenge. And then finally, um, the shortened time that the, uh, this administration has placed on the census, they originally asked for more time. Um, going through October, and now they've asked to shorten it. Um, I think uh, responses need to be postmarked by September 30th or re and received by October 7th, um, which is much shorter than um, previous deadlines. And of course, we're in the midst of a pandemic um, where you would think you would want to increase the time. Um, importantly, hard to count communities, which are communities which may have um, low levels of English proficiency, um, uh, poorer communities, communities living um, in you know, informal housing. Um, those counts are, uh, the, the non-response follow-up, the in-person follow-up is really important for those communities and that's what's being cut short. So it's, it's an active attempt to decrease um, how much you know, those hard to count communities are, are are included. So those right. are the challenges. Talk, talk about the challenges. So my question then is, what are the opportunities here? You know, this is a difficult yeah. year for these reasons. How can we make sure that hard to count communities take advantage of this opportunity to influence the next ten, the next decade? Yeah. So just as our previous uh, speaker mentioned, we we say ten questions, ten minutes, or ten years, right? So. That's kind of the pitch that we that we do. The um, advantages and opportunities are that you know social media and social connectedness are is 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 much greater than it was ten years ago um, when the last census was performed. This is the first census that's online, um, and there are a lot of communities that it'll be easier to to engage in online option, especially in the midst of the pandemic. You can you know harass your WhatsApp feeds and and uh, Instagram people and, and push them um, to, to respond. And I think that kind of person-to-person -person organizing, that person-to-person -person connection of, hey, I'm in your community and I did it and I think it's important you should do it too, is going to carry much more weight than, than what you know, this administration says, again, especially among communities uh, as assembled for, for us now. And um, so that's one of the things, uh, Arab American Institute partnered with a couple of other organizations to create the Yalla Count Me In campaign. Um, and you can go to our website and we answer all sorts of questions. We have a hotline um, we that we can uh, answer 
in English or Arabic where we would talk about how to respond to the race and ethnicity question if you don't see yourself there, uh, you know, questions about data security, what Title 13 of the US code means. Um, we're happy to have all those conversations. And then finally, as we mentioned, the, the timelines have been shortened. Um, Congress has a role. Uh, Congress can extend deadlines, can increase funding. Um, so we, we want to push our representatives to extend the deadline to increase funding, but not just a blank check, because this administration has tried to use the census to create citizen voting age population data, which would, would allow governments to engage in reimportionment while ignoring non-citizen communities. And so we need to make sure that when we push for funding that we're not funding those efforts. Um, so there's a bit of nuance there in our advocacy. And feel free to check, check out our websites or reach out um, to us at any point in time if you want to talk about the, the nuances with that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, the challenges and the opportunities. But one of the questions I think we hear a lot as we do the work in our communities, uh, as we all do the work in our communities, reaching out to uh, folks, is how do you answer the race question? You know, this is a conversation anytime you have when they come to that part of the form, what do you put down as the race question? And what is the advice uh, that you would give to someone who is uh, Arab descent or might be of a mixed descent? It's a great question. Um, you know, both the Arab American community and the Arab American Muslim communities are, are hugely diverse um, in, in, you know, in identity and, 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 and how they view themselves. So it's, it's, there's no one, one stop answer. Some Arab Americans do identify as white. Um, and so that is an option, but there's, you, when you, when you check white, um, it asks for country of origin. And we ask that you place, you know, Lebanon or Syria, or wherever you, you, you feel, um, wherever your family came from. Some I do identify as, 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 as black. And if you want to put that and you check Sudan or wherever you're from, you know, make sure that you include that country of origin as well. Um, there's an other category. Um, and so if you if you are mixed or you don't want to identify as, as white, which we completely understand, we think you should check other. And then that, again, it offer, also asks for a country of origin and place that. Um, so when community organizations like the Arab American Institute, after the data is all collected, since there unfortunately isn't a Arab American or Middle East North African category, we then on the back end will look and say, okay, there are this many Algerians in this area, this number of Yemeni in this area, this number of Iraqis in the area, then we can kind of collectively put that together and know how many Arab Americans um, are in a particular area. All right, thank you for that. Um, all right, I'm going to ask Nabila Mansour with Engage Texas. Why haven't residents and communities actually completed the census yet? What are the barriers? We heard about some challenges uh, from Ryan, but what are you seeing in your communities as you do the work uh, of the hesitation? Yeah, um, well, first of all, thank you for, for having all of us on on this really important uh, topic. We were last year at ISNA not expecting to do another census session uh, for ISNA 2020, but very happy we're doing it because it is so important. And there are so many challenges. Um, our response rate in Texas, and this is um, really uh, indicative of most uh, all across the country, is has been is not been as high as we were hoping for, and, and, and a big reason for that uh, is, of course, the pandemic. Uh, but I would even say that we had a couple of different challenges that were placed before that. Now, Ryan had mentioned the citizenship question. Um, you know, that really did have a, a uh, adverse effect when you are living in a community where there are certain com uh, communities that are tend to be undercounted and we like to use the word undercounted as opposed to hard to count because it's not that these um, communities are hard to count. The government just has to count them and 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 so they're undercounted because there is certain things systemic uh, barriers that have been placed that is really hard 
for these communities to actually respond to the census. What is that? Well, when you have a fear of government, when there is this kind of um, atmosphere of mistrust, um, then it's really hard to give away all of your info to the government willingly and knowingly, right? So, so who are the folks that tend to not get counted in the census? Um, we're talking about immigrants. We're talking about non-citizens, uh, DACA, DACA recipients, uh, dreamers, um, folks that don't speak English as, a, as their first language. Um, and, and they are worried and they are scared. And, um, and then someone comes and says, well, we just want you to fill out this survey and it's gonna ask you for your address and it's gonna ask you how many people are in your, your, your apartment. Maybe there's 12 people living in your apartment and your apartment is only supposed to have technically, according to the contract, five or six. You're scared. How is this information going to be used against me? Is this information going to be shared with another department? Um, does this mean that my, um, my grandmother that has overstayed her visitor visa and is living with me is going to be now be deported. Um, so all of these concerns are real. And we see that on the ground when we go to immigrant refugee communities and talk to them and try to tell them that no, your response to census is safe. It will not be used against you. But that's a hard argument to make um, when, when all of these really real fears um, are, are, are percolating in the atmosphere right now. Um, so, so, so I would say that is really the number one reason. Now, why is it important that those communities that are most scared answer the census? Because they are the ones that need the funding the most. Um, the census is going to decide how we're gonna allocate $800 billion in federal funding. And, and that is money that, de that deserves to go to the communities that need it. There are communities that are overcounted. So there are certain communities that will answer the census and their college student is away and then they'll answer it for them and the college student gets counted in the college campus as well. And all of a sudden, guess who those communities are? They're not the ones that need the funding for school lunches. They're not the ones that are gonna need funding for all of that pandemic uh, healthcare that we are need, what we need to come down the pipeline. Um, so so it's, it's a really big issue and I'm finding we're working right now um, in exactly these places and it is a hard barrier to try to convince folks that look, respond to the census, it's your one chance in 10 years for you to make sure that you have access to all the resources that you deserve. Um, you know, and then the pandemic doesn't help. All of a sudden, folks are worried about how they're gonna pay next month's rent, how they're gonna get food on the table. And we're saying, well, yeah, I know you have all those worries, but here's another one. Could you just please answer this as well? Um, and so, you know, we always say like, it, it just takes 10 minutes, but when you're juggling two jobs and you have the stresses of everyday life, uh, even that is asking a lot of these, these communities. And it's, it's been um, a real problem trying to get folks to concentrate on the census um, when on everyone's mind is all of those pandemic related crises that they are going through. Um, so so we, we know that the challenges are high, but, but the repercussions of not responding to the census um, are so devastating that it is imperative that we encourage folks to go to my2020census.gov, um, that we go and, 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 and meet these folks and meet them where they're at and try to talk to them about why this is so important. Um, I would also just say that, uh, you know, another thing that really has, has hurt our community, and this is something I found out when we were doing kind of the work and meeting them and, and talking to them like in, in food drives and back to school um, uh, uh, events. Um, a lot of folks have mixed immigrant families. And so what they've done is, well, we responded to the census. Well, did you count everyone in the census? And so they'll say, no, we didn't count our niece who's visiting from overseas, or we didn't count this person. The census um, is supposed to count everyone that is in our country 
right now. It is, it is the only way we'll get the accurate, beautiful picture of the demographics that make up our country. Um, but it is, it, I think people just don't know. It's not only for citizens. It's not like registering to vote. Um, if you're a citizen, if you're a non-citizen, you get to take part. And it's, and one way we've been doing is uh, talking to folks is saying, you know, uh, for many of our community members, uh, they, they can't vote, right? They're not citizens yet, but they can still be part of our democracy. And the way you become part of our democracy is making sure that you count and that your voice is heard through the census. We have to get the census right. We won't get another chance until another 10 years. Absolutely. So you, yeah, and so, so we have to get it right. And so, you know, if you leave your kids, and this is another thing I found out, which I didn't even know, but folks sometimes forget to put their babies are the young ones on the census. So we were like, no, 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 everybody counts. You have to also write their name and put the info about them on that census form. Because if you're, if you're eight years old and the next census comes in 10 years, that kid is going to then be 18. All that 10 years of funding for that eight-year-old, the yes. entire childhood is, is missed. So, um, so, so it's so important we get it right. Uh, I'm so happy we're doing something like this. Uh, this. This census timeline was shortened. Uh, it is another challenge we have. We, we have one less month than we anticipated. Um, and so we're, we're cramming all of that work that we thought we would have another month um, to make sure that our response rates uh, uh, get higher so that our communities can survive and that they can thrive. Yeah, so this is a great uh, segue. Um, Randall Mohammed, um, could you just give us a brief intro? You're at AIC. Um, could you just give us a brief intro about uh, the college as well as the, the challenges for young people who are at universities and colleges right now in a pandemic? Uh, how are they engaging the census? And also, what are the challenges uh, in, in community mosques as well as um, underrepresented, hard to count communities um, for all of us that we are also seeing uh, on a larger scale. Um, okay, first of all, thank you uh, for having me on this uh, very important panel and discussion. Um, as you mentioned, I'm with the American Islamic College. Um, we're a very unique college. Um, it's been on the landscape since 1983, but it went through um, our, a remake or renovation of, of sorts back in 2013. And we're now um, at accreditation status. Um, real soon, we, are, we have candidacy status with the Higher Learning Commission. And we offer a very safe environment for our students and youth right now, um, offering Islamic studies degrees, both at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Um, um, so that's that here, right here in Chicago, which is one of the most beautiful cities in America. Um, also one of the most dangerous, which kind of gets us to the point of the importance of the census. Um, when higher education right now is facing, as you all know, uh, so many challenges, it's ridiculous. And I think this is the global um, reality right now where things were on a simmer. And when 2020 hit, someone turned the pilot up and now we're at a rapid boil and the splatter of social injustice and everything else is now hitting us in the face and giving us, everyone is taking notice of these issues. Um, so uh, the same challenges that are facing the communities are pretty much faced, uh, obviously the microcosm of, of higher education. And so all we can do again is get the word out. We'd like to think that the fact that this is higher education and, and people are they should be typically, quote unquote, more aware of the importance of the census that they would take it more seriously. But then again, you, you have to look at the broader community issues that we that we face. And in, in my particular community, um, you know, I would say, you know, many of those in my community feel disenfranchised for various reasons. You know, um, it's no... Um, um, surprise, many of our people didn't come in on, on vessels 
seeking escape from um, or asylum, you know, from from some bad situation. We were in the holes of ships 400 years ago or so. So my personal story, you know, that reality is still very close to home. It was just three generations ago that that my great great grandmother was actually born into slavery. Um, and so, you know, when you start talking about the census, it becomes important for a myriad of reasons. One, if I really wanted to do the research into my background, I usually typically only have census data that, that helps me find my lineage because they weren't taking names. They were changing those names when they got off the ships. Those Muslims were given different names, the names of their slave masters and what have you. So the, the census is very important from a historical context. And I think that even now, you know, um, when I drive uh, across the country um, on vacation, what have you, and you go through various communities, when you drive through what is typically a black community, you see the same type of poverty, the same um, level of, um, I would say, economic um, um, disparity than if you drove maybe one or two blocks east or west of that community. And it goes the same here in Chicago. So it's very important that we, we find ourselves trying to be listed um, um, in 2020 census so that these much needed resources do come. I think it's also very important and even more so that we have some accountability factors there so that we can make sure and ensure that we are getting the, the proper slice of the pie as it were, and that it's not being funneled, you know, to like, she, like it was like um, Nabila said, where some communities are getting double counted, but that we actually do get an accurate count and the proper resources that are due. And um, since education is um, one of my main passions, you know, it's very important that we properly educate um, our communities as to the importance of the census. Um, you know, many of them, they don't have uh, a proper sense of what is really valuable and needed. They're, they're, they're ignorant to really what's going on around them. So, education becomes even more important, and that would raise the importance of the census as well. But right now, um, it seems as if eyes are all on the violence in the streets, the police brutality, the social injustice. And so your eye may, like in a magic trick, comes off of the ball just for a split second, but we, we just have to keep focusing on, on the things that really matter. I hope I answered that question. You did, you did. And, and what a powerful story of of just understanding, um, you know, the history of, of your of your family and, and it only being available through the census. So I think one of the key uh, points of this was to have experts delve into the issues, the challenges, as well as the real importance in various in various different fields in our communities. So I will um, actually ask you for a quick comment on what do you feel, what is the message that you'd like to send out to our viewers who are watching right now all across the nation? Um, so I'm going to start with you, Randall. What is the message about completing the census or any message specifically about making sure we all count because we deserve to count? So I'm going to give it to you, a quick message to all those who are watching. Please go ahead, Randall. I would just say as, as Muslims and believers, we, we know that God gives and provides all that we need, but we are also taught by our prophet, peace upon him, to tie our camel. So the census will allow us to tie our camel. Let's do everything that we can to, uh, to put ourselves in the position to receive the resources that we can. Um, Nabila? Um, I would just say that the census is a snapshot of our country. And we are here and we get a chance to tell our story, just like Randall mentioned, through the census. And we are part of the um, tapestry of this wonderful country. And let us be part of it. Let us be that, um, that, that beautiful uh, a segment of this beautiful country that we're part of and be part of that um, snapshot. And you do that by being part of the census. Ryan? Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for your great uh, contributions. I would say that um, all the communities that are watching are on the receiving end of um, white supremacist violence and a lot of white supremacist policies coming from not only this administration, but also um, structural and institutional 
uh, discrimination and 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 bias. And part of that, at least in this administration, has taken shape into trying to weaponize the census against um, very communities on this call, also weaponizing immigration law and a lot of other areas and in, in, in election laws as well. Um, responding to the census and getting our communities to respond to the census is one small way to push back, to say we are here um, and your attempts to erase us and to marginalize us um, won't work and we're not afraid. And so I think it's really important not only from the funding point of view and the apportionment point of view, but also as a way to, to, to show that, uh, you know, this is America as well. Thank you so much to our panelists, Ryan Suto from Arab American Institute, Nabila Mansour from Engage Texas, Randall Muhammad, uh, American Islamic College. Appreciate uh, your, uh, your time and everyone get to it. You can do it right now. It takes 10 minutes. It's one decade of resources for our communities as a whole. Thank you so much. The census is officially here and we're going to teach you how to fill it out in less than two minutes. Here we go. The census helps bring needed resources to our community, especially in emergency and critical times like these. Every person in the U.S. is counted. Yes, man, women, child, citizen, undocumented, students, everyone. So with that being said, let's show you how it's done. On a mobile device or desktop, go on 2020census.gov and click respond. Here you're going to see a button that says start questionnaire. Very simple. You click that button. Now here we have two options. A, you can use your 12 digit census ID that was mailed to you, or you can just click, I don't have my ID. I'm going to use my address instead. So we're going to go ahead and use the option where we can simply use our home address. So over here, you put in your address, you click next, you put in your full name, your phone number, and now you answer some household questions. So you start off by answering how many people are inside of your household who live with you. Once you click next, you actually write down their name. So I'm putting down my wife's name because it's just my wife and I in our house. Once you fill out the names of the people who live in your house, you're just answering very simple, basic questions that portrays to you in your living situation you select the names you click next and now you simply answer personal questions about you your gender your date of birth and finally your race so you go ahead and you fill out your race I'm Pakistani so I'm gonna go to other Asian and choose Pakistani if you don't see your race here all the way in the bottom you'll see some other race we're commonly asked what if you're Arab or Middle Eastern here is where you can scroll down and put in your ethnicity whether you're Palestinian Egyptian Moroccan or Syrian once you finish that step the census will ask you to do the same for gender race and date of birth with everyone else in your family you answer one or two more simple questions and you click submit questionnaire and congratulations you have officially completed your 2020 census assalamu alaikum peace be upon all of you i am christopher nevarez azda and i have been working with the illinois muslim civic coalition on census for the past year as an undocumented latino muslim I am very well aware of some of the challenges that our communities face. And so it is that for that reason that I have been working with the coalition to ensure that every single person is counted. The census is easy, it's safe, and it's important. El censo es fácil, es rápido, y es seguro. So we must ensure that we are all counted because it decides political representation, funding, resources, among many other things, for every single one of us for the next 10 years. Our family at some point came or was brought to America. And so now we must make sure that we are also counted in America. Nuestras familias en un punto en nuestra historia vinieron o fueron traídos a los Estados Unidos. Ahora debemos asegurarnos que también contemos en los Estados Unidos. I urge all of you to fill out your census online today. It takes five minutes and it is crucial for the next 10 years. Le pido a todos que llenen su censo hoy en línea. Toma cinco minutos y decide los siguientes 10 años para todas nuestras comunidades. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Salamu alaikum.
Assalamu alaikum and hello. This is your brother Ashfaq Sayyid signing in from Naperville and I'm also part of Islamic Center of Naperville. I wanted to welcome all the members of ISNA to this convention. Sensex happens once in 10 years as you all know and it is very important for us and for our next generation. Every person who lives in United States has to be counted and whether he is immigrant, citizen, non-immigrant, whoever it is, it has to be counted. And uh, Sensex data is used to distribute billions of dollars and communities, cities, schools, park districts, everyone gets a good amount of funds through this. Let us commit to ourselves that we get all the funds which we need to get it for our generation as well as for the next generation for next 10 years. The US Census reporting period will be ending on September 30th, 2020. And I personally urge each and every person to please register yourself by mail, by phone, or by online. And it is very, very critical that we all register ourselves. Thank you so much and Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dina and I'm with the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition. 2020 has been a challenging year for all of us. And I know with all that has happened that I got a crash course on why the census is important. Too many of our communities were underprepared and disproportionately affected by the coronavirus outbreak. We have all felt the effects of this in one way or another. With unemployment rising, it is apparent now more than ever, just how important these social service programs are to keep our communities afloat in times of crisis. Vital services like food stamps, Medicaid, childcare, national school lunch programs are all funded when we get counted. So we need to make sure we count because we don't know what will happen in the next 10 years and we should be prepared for anything. Assalamu alaikum, Randall Muhammad here. I just wanted to say that um, when I'm asked about the 2020 census, my mind goes in two directions. One, I reflect on Allah's mercy and his ability to provide for all of humanity, anything that we need. But then I think about the fact that we are also taught to tie our camels. So, you know, personally, my great grandmother, great great grandmother was born in the chattel slavery um, in this country, and she gave birth to 13 children, one of which was my great grandmother who uh, with great effort and uh, fortitude, she migrated to Chicago like many of my people did at that time. And um, she was able to save up money doing um, odd jobs here and there. And every year she would go down and, receive, and, and save one of her siblings. So, you know, when you reflect on these realities, you say one thing to yourself, you know, there's been a heck of a price paid. We must be counted so that we can receive much needed resources that our communities need. So I said, be counted. Thank you. As you saw in the previous video, the census is easy, simple, and quick. Subhan was able to complete it in five minutes for him and his wife by visiting 2020census.gov. The census can be completed online, via phone, or through the mail. Remember, it's nine questions for each member of your family. The census is going to ask you about the number of people who live in your home, the number of people in your family, whether the residence is a home, apartment, or mobile home, a telephone number in case the Census Bureau needs to reach you for clarification, your sex, age, date of birth, as well as information about your origin, if you are of Hispanic origin or what race you identify with. That, these questions will be asked for each member of your family. It's never going to ask you about your citizenship status, your immigration status, any social security information, if you use public benefits, or specifically any information about payment or bank accounts. The census is important now more than ever. According to the national statistics, the national self-response is at 64%. 46% of our nation will be left uncounted if we were to complete the census today. The census ends September 30th. We have time for every single member of our 
household, our communities, and our nation to count. Imagine, in a room of 10 people, only six people would have gotten counted based on the statistics at this point. Guess what? The other four, those who were not counted, would most likely look like you and me, people of color who've always been underrepresented, often in policies that are made or specifically in getting the resources that they need. There are success stories of how the census numbers have helped communities gain power and justice, as well as the resources that they essentially need for benefiting their community, their state, and the nation as a whole. Before 2010, Illinois had not had any Asian American legislators in office. In 2010, the Chinese American community rallied and advocated to form a complete count committee, as well as take into account all the community members in the four divided legislative districts. As a result, more than 90% of the Chinese American population was put into one district when legislative boundaries were redrawn in 2011. And guess what? In 2016, Teresa Ma was elected as the first Asian American legislator in the history of the Illinois General Assembly. That's exciting and absolutely something that can be done again because census numbers can help us with political representation as well as resources. Census also helps to inform 700 billion in federal funding that will be dispersed to 50 states based on the census data for each state. This is going to inform programs such as Medicaid, as well as need-based health insurance. It's also going to help determine what school districts will be doing for the next generation of students. It shows impact on businesses during hurricane season, as well as will inform information about SNAP benefits for families in need. These are essential resources that communities, especially those that are undercounted, require and have the right to. So make sure that you go online to www.2020census.gov. It's easy, it's simple, and it's needed now more than ever. If you're already done, that is awesome. Make sure that you text 10 friends and let them know this is the time for your family, for your friends, for your community members to get it done right now. You're going to start seeing some great resources on your screen as you do that right now. Make sure you complete the census as well as text others to do the same.
Ooh, 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 ooh